All right, so today I want to show you the 10 most popular ball python combinations on the European side of the ball python industry. It's kind of interesting if you actually compare the European ball python industry with the ball python industry here in the United States. It is completely different. Not only are the prices really different from one location to the other, you'll actually find a lot of genes that are location specific. There's a few that are specific to only over in Europe that you won't find in the United States, and there's some genes over here here that you won't find over in Europe, which is kind of interesting. There's quite a bit of overlap when it comes to genes, but I'd say if you actually look at the most common combinations, there's definitely some differences as far as what's the most popular combination. And you can actually go over to MorphMarket.com and look at all the ball pythons over on MorphMarket as far as just the ones in Europe. There's about 32,000 ball pythons over on the European side of the MorphMarket website over there, which is kind of crazy and out of all those you can actually narrow it down to the most popular combinations the genes that people are combining together to make some of the most popular combinations it's completely different than you'd see over here in the United States as a matter of fact I think you'll be surprised at what the number one combination is over in Europe it's pretty interesting so today I want to jump over the internet and I want to show you the top 10 combinations in ball pythons over in Europe all right, so I'm going to jump over here on MorphMarket.com, and I want to start with this snake right here. This is the number one most popular combination in all of ball pythons over here on the European side of Morph Market, and that is the Firefly, the combination of the Fire and the Pastel. And I actually looked at the numbers over here. There's actually 1,057 Fireflies or Firefly combinations over here, which is pretty amazing. As a matter of fact, I actually did, just did a video on the top 10 combinations combinations for pet snakes and the firefly is definitely on the top of the list as far as people looking for a pet ball python so if you actually looked at just at the fire and the pastel by themselves both genes have been around for a really long time and if you actually get a firefly it's relatively inexpensive I'd say most of the times you could probably get a firefly for less than a couple hundred dollars at least over here in the US you know the prices can change a little bit over in Europe as a matter of fact on the European inside a morph market you'll actually see a lot of the prices are a lot less than they are over here in the United States which is pretty amazing but I say if you're actually looking for a pet ball python this is probably the number one that I would go for when essentially what it is is you actually have a pastel which is a yellow snake and sometimes the pastels can brown out a little bit and then when you add fire to the pastel it really brightens it and cleans it up and it'll actually really hold its color and brightness as it ages and matures. One of the best combinations you can have as far as just a pet ball python, which I found was pretty interesting. It's the number one combination over here on the European side of morph marking. All right, so here is the number two, and believe it or not, the number two most popular combination over in Europe is the bumblebee, the combination of the pastel and the spider. And look at how beautiful these bumblebees can be, pretty amazing. There's actually 895 bumblebees or bumblebee combinations over here on the European side of Morph Market, which is kind of crazy. And the bumblebees, is, it's kind of tricky because a lot of times the, the spider can actually get kind of a bad name. As in fact, I was actually surprised on this one because a lot of reptile shows over in Europe have actually banned the display and the sale of the spider gene. So I was actually surprised that the spider is the number two most popular, which is kind of crazy. And I'd say that the spider is kind of a double-edged sword. It's probably one of the most bittersweet genes in all of ball pythons as far as, you know, you can actually look at some of the combinations with the spider and it produces what I consider to be even just the spider bite itself is really visually stunning just by itself and if you mix the spider in with a lot of other combinations you can make some of the most amazing combinations but the problem with the spider is every now and then you'll actually get a snake that has a neurological issue like a little bit of a head wobble and sometimes you'll actually have really severe neurological issues with just a small number of spiders kind of gives the gene a really bad name and the other thing to keep in mind with the spider is you really can't breed a spider 
compared to another spider because 25% of the time you'll get the super spider which is a lethal combination and the eggs won't develop. So the spider I say is a little bit tricky. As a matter of fact, I do have spider here in my collection. I breed just a few spiders and I don't produce a whole lot. As a matter of fact, I've been to a lot of reptile shows where I have a whole table full of like 60 or 70 hatchlings and people come up and they'll be like, hey, where's your spiders? Because they know I breed spiders and a lot of people don't. It's kind of fallen out of popularity. As a matter of fact, I've actually had some people come up to my table and buy every single spider on the table because no, not a lot of people are really producing the spiders anymore, at least here in Colorado, which is kind of crazy. All right, so here is the third most popular. This is the combination of the pastel and the Mojave. Kind of the nickname is the Pastavi. Really amazing combination. And it's interesting, the top three combinations all contain pastel. And if you actually look at just the pastel gene by itself, it's probably one of the more common genes in all ball pythons. As a matter of fact, I think it's the number one most common as far as all ball pythons put together. The pastel is an inexpensive gene and you can work it into just about any combination and make some really amazing combinations. As a matter of fact, on this one, you'll actually have the Mojave. The Mojave kind of looks like a lesser in some cases, uh, except it has like a darker background than the lesser. And then when you work the pastel into a lot of your Mojaves, a lot of times you'll actually get a really bright yellow on top of a really dark snake, a lot of high contrast between the brights and the darks. And I've actually seen some Pastave that are not as bright as this. As a matter of fact, it really varies depending on the version of the pastel and the version of the Mojave. I've seen pretty much a whole range. I'd say this is probably the best uh, pastavi that I've seen over here on Morph Market. And if you actually look at the numbers, there's actually 867 pastavis over here on the European side of Morph Market. All right, so coming in at number four, this one actually surprised me. This is the Lemon Blast, the combination of the pastel and the pinstripe. Another pastel combination. And let me tell you, when it comes to pinstripe, it's definitely one of my favorite genes. Just as a standalone gene, the pinstripe can look really bright gold, almost like a metallic gold in some cases. And then when you work the pastel into it, a lot of times it'll really jumble up the pattern. Sometimes you'll actually still keep a lot of the gold color. Sometimes they can brown out a little bit with the lemon blast. I actually have four female lemon blasts that I use as breeders. I produce a whole bunch of pinstripes and lemon blast combinations here in my collection. As a matter of fact, one of my most, uh, pretty much my favorite lemon blast combination is when you work bamboo into the lemon blast and you'll actually get a really crazy, almost like a silvery metallic looking snake with bamboo in the lemon blast. It's pretty wild. So there's actually 825 lemon blasts over here on the European side of Morph Market. Quite a few. I'm actually surprised this came in as number four, which is pretty wild. All right, so take a look at this one. This one kind of surprised me too. This is the pewter, the combination of the cinnamon and the pastel. As a matter of fact, so far in all the top five, we have pastel in every single combination, which is pretty unexpected. So the pewters, uh, it really depends, the, the visual appearance of the pewter really depends on the version of the cinnamon that you use. And in some versions of cinnamon, I've actually seen some where they look almost like a really dark normal, and some of them can have a lot of gold almost like a coppery color to them and sometimes these pewters can look almost like a almost like a nasanthic kind of a silvery color like this one and then I've actually seen some of them that have quite a bit of a gold color to the pewters or kind of like a like kind of like the cinnamon color I guess you know because it has cinnamon in it the cinnamon can be really variable from one to the other in the pewters there's actually 524 pewters over here on the European side of morph market which is pretty surprising so take a look at this. Coming in at number six is the combination of the calico and the pastel. Again, the pastel in all these top combinations, which is really surprising. And I've actually produced some of these this year. And let me tell you, they are absolutely breathtaking, working calico and pastel into the mix. And the calico can be pretty variable from one calico to the other. The, the calico that I have here in my collection, it actually brings in a lot of uh, kind of like a, a really 
deep orange color in a lot of the calicos. And this one you can see there's a lot of yellow coming through. It's a completely different line of calico than I have in my collection. Sometimes the calico combinations can be really dark orange and sometimes they can have a lot of this really bright yellow in the combination. So the calico, the pastel calico, the nickname for that combination is called the bubble gum. <laughs> it's, and it gets a little bit confusing because some people will call just the calico by itself the bubble gum. As a matter of fact, if you actually go over to some of these genetic calculators and plug in different combinations, sometimes it'll actually say like, for example, this would actually be like the bubble gum pastel. You'll actually see that as far as the common name on some of your genetic calculators. And sometimes, as a matter of fact, you can actually come over here to Morph Market, type in bubble gum and do a search and it'll actually split it up into the calico and the pastel. The, the, the two genes combined are sometimes called the bubble gum. And as far as bubble gums over here in the European side of Morph Market, there's actually 278 calico pastels or calico pastel combinations over here. All right, so take a look at this. This is actually the pumpkin pie, which is kind of crazy, coming in at number seven. And there's 230 pumpkin pies over here on the European side of Morph Market. So this is the combination of the yellow belly and the pie. And sometimes when you add yellow belly to the pie, you can get a really super bright orange as far as the color. You can actually see on this one, it's not as bright orange as you'd see sometimes. And it seems like with a lot of these pumpkin pies, it seems like there's they're brighter orange as there's hatchlings and as they age and mature they can kind of brown out a little bit and I actually saw one video where you can kind of pick out the yellow belly in your pies every single time I thought this was kind of a neat trick so if you actually take a look at the where the the white connects with the colored part of the snake the border right between the white and the color if it's really super smooth then you don't have yellow belly in the mix but if you actually see how it's like pixelated and really jagged like this, that's an indication that you actually have yellow belly in your pie. It's an easy way to pick it out. You can definitely see all around here, all this kind of a jagged pixelation all the way around the color spots, which is kind of a neat trick. All right, so take a look at this, another spider combination. This is the Enchi Spider, also called the Stinger Bee. In the Stinger Bee, there's actually 227 Stinger Bees over here on the European side of Morph Market. And essentially what it is, it looks almost exactly like a spider. I absolutely love the single gene spiders. And then when you add Enchi to the spider, essentially what it does is it takes kind of the spider web pattern up on the top and it breaks it up into more of like a spotted pattern right along the back which is kind of crazy and the spider is probably one of the goldest jeans other than pinstripe both of them can be really super like a metallic gold and the spider actually has a lot of white coming up and certain examples of the spider and sometimes I've actually seen some spiders that don't have any white coming up the sides I really like the the really high whites like this one as a matter of fact if you add calico to the spider it'll actually bring this white way up on the back where you just get a little bit like a little line of gold right down the top. One of my favorite spider combinations. All right, so here is the black pewter. This is actually the combination of the black pastel and the pastel, another pastel combination. I was surprised at how many pastels and a couple examples where we actually have spider in the mix over on the European side of Morph Market, which is kind of crazy. So this one for the black pewter, there's actually 217 black pewters over here on Morph Market, the European side of Morph Market. And kind of the interesting thing with the black pewter is that the black pastel is actually a lilac with cinnamon and the difference between the pewter and the black pewter essentially the pewter uses the cinnamon the black pewter uses the black pastel and both genes the cinnamon and the black pastel are really super close as a matter of fact if you actually breed them together you'll get an eight ball which is almost exactly the same as the super cinnamon or the super black pastel and let me tell you most people will say there's definitely a difference between the cinnamons and 
and the black pastels, it's not the same gene. And usually the black pastels are a lot darker than you'll actually see with your cinnamons. A lot of times your cinnamons will have more of a kind of a cinnamon color with your cinnamons. And it seems like if you actually look at the black pewters compared to the pewters, a lot of times the black pewters will actually have a darker background. You can see this one is really super dark compared to you would really never see this dark of a background just looking at your straight pewters. And sometimes these can vary a little bit too. Sometimes you get a little bit of that cinnamon color coming into some of your black pewters, but not really as much as you'd see with the cinnamon in the pewters, which is pretty interesting. All right, so coming in at number 10, this one might actually surprise you, and that is the vanilla cream, the combination of the vanilla and the fire. And let me tell you, this is definitely one of my favorite combinations. It gets a little bit tricky on this one because the, the combination of the vanilla and the fire is an allelic combination. So if you take a vanilla cream and you breed it to something else, you get half vanillas and half fires, and you won't be able to tell the difference between the vanillas and the fires. They look pretty much identical. Although when you're breeding it into combinations, say for example, if you actually make the super fire, it's a completely white snake and the super vanilla is not a white snake. It has a really jumbled up pattern. So they're definitely two different genes. And as far as the numbers over here on Morph Market, there's actually 206 vanilla creams over here on the European side of Morph Market. As a matter of fact, if you actually take this and work in pastel, you take the vanilla cream and you convert it to the vanilla scream one of my favorite combinations that makes pretty much the same exact snake but working pastel into it you can get a really super bright yellow vanilla cream which is pretty awesome there's a lot of really cool things you can do with the vanilla cream working other genes into the mix all right so it is time for the question of the day and lettuce asks do you sell these ball pythons? And that is a very good question. So yes, I actually make quite a few videos kind of showing off my hatchling ball pythons every year. I hatch out a whole bunch of snakes and I go through each and every one and I do sell all those hatchlings. And it's a little bit deceiving because you can look back at some of my old videos where I'm kind of showing off my hatchlings. And then you go over to my morph market site where I'm selling ball pythons. As a matter of fact, a lot of people have been asking, hey, how do I get to your morph market site? And it's actually underneath every single video if you expand the description underneath the video I'll actually have a link over to my morph market store and if you actually go over there you'll get a blank page right now because I don't have any snakes for sale as a matter of fact most of the year it's completely blank because it seems like as soon as I actually put some up for sale over on morph market they sell incredibly fast I produce maybe about a hundred hatchlings every single year and the last time I had some snakes up for sale over there I think I had like seven bamboos like Bobby around my neck here there they're actually Bobby's grandkids all seven bamboos and I put them up over on morphmarket.com and within about 10 hours all those bamboos sold which is kind of crazy they go super fast so yes I do sell snakes but I don't produce that many to where I can really have a really big inventory over on morph market and sometimes I'll actually produce some that are really expensive like a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars or something like that sometimes Sometimes those will sit on there for a few weeks because as it seems like anything under about you know six or seven hundred dollars it sells really quick but then once you kind of reach you know the higher end of your ball pythons as a matter of fact if you're actually producing ball pythons that are like worth thousands and thousands of dollars I would think it would be a pretty hard sell to sell some of those combinations you probably would have quite a big inventory over on morph market not a lot of buyers are actually throwing down that kind of money as far as buying up a whole bunch of snakes so that is pretty much it thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next video